What is going on, everybody? About me, Father Man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through tonight, Tuesday's MLB slate. Certainly a lot more interesting than last night's slate was, and uh, not a great slate for me. I still stand by, you know, taking those chances and 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 getting weird on those little slates. But I did not do well. Um, Sheets, how did you do? And then we'll jump into today's slate. I did not do well either. I, I was I was hoping that uh, the Friedel home run Friedel home run was good, getting you off to a good start. I was off to a good start, yeah. And then I didn't see really what happened after uh, Contreras got pulled out of the game after the third inning or whatever that was. So yeah, I wasn't really uh, good at either. Uh, so yeah, I don't even know who ended up. What what ended up winning the slate? I think probably Boston Baltimore, which was still still going. Oh, like that game's still going right. probably right. That's right. That's right. Was, yeah, I think it's still happening. Um, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, no, but we got a nice slate to go and get back on track. Yeah, right? big big slate. Um, I am gonna. I'm going straight from here to to down to uh, L.A. So. Some of my stuff might be a little bit late uh, in the day, a la, a la Rody, and I'll, I'll try to get it up there as quickly as I can. But uh, in terms of the early builds and all that stuff, I'm not even sure that I'm going to play much myself today, but I will try to get my uh, my cores and all that stuff put up there as quickly as I can. I'm definitely playing today because I, I uh, what tomorrow I'm probably I'm I'll, I'm going to end up figuring out when I can be around. I just don't know when that's going to be right now. I'm mm -hmm. counting myself out for the whole day. Um, and then Thursday I'm going to be, I'll be away, but I'll, I'll probably, I'll probably end up playing. So you guys will, you guys will hear from me over the next couple of days. Um, but I won't be as, as active, uh, uh, in general, but tonight I'm definitely playing. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, all right, well, let's get into it tonight. Um, let's talk, let's pull up your screen and we'll go game by game here. Yeah. What is this? What can it Zach Wheeler projected opener? All right. Hold on. What is this? Yeah. They did the other day with, uh, they did the other day as well. Um, guys, coming back from the injury list, uh, the, oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So, um, what did they do with the other day? It was, it was, I thought it was Wheeler the other day too, actually. Um, all right, let's, let's go game by game. So we've got the Atlanta Washington situation where you're going to probably end up with some pretty, pretty chalky ish plays, but it's a big slate. So maybe not worrying about it as much as, as we did yesterday, I think Mueller will get a little bit of love, but I'm not overly excited about it. I, I, as I keep saying with Espino, he tends to, you know, just get by, doesn't walk a lot of guys. Not always the ideal guy to fully stack against, but I have no problem with stacking against him on this slate. Uh, you're just going to probably deal with double digit ownership for most of the guys you want to play. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I, I do like Atlanta for what it's worth. I think that again, going to be one of the more popular teams, but uh, they're definitely high on my list as of right now. Where are you? Where do you stand with this one? Yeah, I have Atlanta uh, as high on my list as well. I have them rated number one. Uh, I also have them owned number one. So um, you know, take that for for what it is. Not that I have them that much better than anybody else. So it's not as if I have to have to play them. So we'll have to monitor and see where the ownership kind of takes us. But right now, I have them as the highest owned and and the highest uh, the highest projected. And I have um, what's his name? I do have uh, Mueller as as playable. You know, I have him. There's a whole bunch of guys I have um, that are below the top two, as far as I'm concerned, at least as far as values and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And he's certainly one of them. And he's currently not, at least what I'm looking at, garnering that much ownership. So, um, I mean, very, very serious pitch because probably 75 pitches. Um, oh, is that right? Only made two starts in his career. Um, yeah, so just keep that in mind. Don't be surprised if he throws 50 pitches and that's it. I don't want that. Well, I'm, I'm just saying it's I want, more, I want more than that. That's not yeah. that's not a lot. Yeah, I, I don't think he should be a priority for anybody today. I think that considering him is fine because of the matchup and he probably throws 75, I don't think there's anything exciting about him personally. Okay. So uh, I don't, I'm not getting to Washington today. And uh, so for me, it's Atlanta and, and maybe some more. Makes sense. All right. Um, let's talk about the your Yanks and, and Blue Jays. Um, will Judge hit it tonight? Tonight might be a good night for him to hit it, by the way. Um, good. It might be. I it might mean, be, yeah. I think that, uh, I think honestly, like I'm not all that excited about the stacks in this game from a hitting perspective. I do think Barrios, I understand how bad he's been. He is 6,300 as a guy who can, you know, we're talking about talking about playing other guys who are, more expensive, no leash, all that stuff. And at least we know Brios has a leash. And for what it's worth, uh, his last uh, really, I think he had a, yeah, he had a re last really, really strong game was against these Yankees. Um, 
So I'm open to Barrios at 6,300. And I think that Judge as a one-off makes perfect sense, even as he's not hitting, even even without hitting home runs lately, he's still putting up numbers. Um, not huge ones, but I'm just saying he's, he's always doing something. He's, he's, he's walking, he's hitting doubles, whatever. Um, I, I'm not all that interested in the stacks though, in this game, I think that Barrios is going to be a guy I end up fiddling with, but doesn't feel, doesn't feel great. But I also feel like, well, I could really, I could play a 10% guy who could, could be the highest scoring pitcher on the slate because of the strength of this pitching on the slate is not that strong. So I am interested in Barrios a little bit. I think Brios is a great play. Um, I, I like him in tournaments tonight. Um, uh, I don't think these people are going to play him. Um, I think there are cheaper guys that are going to be not cheaper guys, but there are guys in his sort of his range is going to be popular. We'll get to him later. Um, and as a result of that, I think he's completely in play. Um, he, listen, he's not going to, he's, he's going to, he's going to put up negative sometimes, you know, but he's, he, yep. he puts up some good games too. And, and Yankees can strike out, you know, and, and, and uh, I, I think that at 6,300, like you said, on a slate where the pitching is not necessarily the greatest, um, I think it's, I think you might end up getting a 15 point performance there that, that, that you might want. Um, so I, I don't mind that at all, actually. And I, and I agree with you about the stacks. I'm not getting into either of the stacks. So we're sort of on the same page, like a little mild uh, appreciation for the Barrios play and, mm-hmm. and not too big of a, of a appreciation for the stacks. Yeah, I do think that, I mean, if you want to get contrarian, I, I don't think that playing the Yankees is the worst idea, but I, I'm not personally getting to enough lineups where I do it, but I, I definitely think that it's it's reasonable uh, if you wanted to. At, at low ownership against Barrios, who's been getting himself into trouble consistently, uh, I, I can see the argument for both sides, both playing Barrios and then both and then uh, playing the Yankees. All right, uh, let's move over to the next one, which is Baltimore-Boston. Um, the, tri- the triumphant return of, uh, of Kyle Braddich, right? The triumphant return of Kyle Bradish? What do you mean? I mean, since he his last per his last performance, he put up forty two fantasy points, and now he's yeah. back. Oh, he's oh, back. yeah, yeah. He's back. he's back. This show it wasn't a fluke. And he gets <laughs> Fenway. Best of luck to you, sir. <laughs> yeah, good luck in Fenway. <laughs> good um, luck with all of that. Uh, so I'm not. Uh, there's no way I'm doing that. Um, and I'm not really getting a walk either. I actually do think that Boston is is one of the top stacks on the board. Um, especially with Braddish coming off of the 42-point performance um, at Fenway. I think that Boston is completely in play, one of the top stacks for me. Um, and I'm not getting to Baltimore, although probably should look at them a little bit deeper. So for me, at least first look, it would be neither the pitchers and Boston, certainly a team to target. Yeah, I much prefer uh, the other side. Uh, Baltimore? I, I don't – yeah, I don't have any – like I, I – I, we keep saying it with Bradish. I think we think that like there's a reason. It's not like I don't. There's nothing bad about this guy. He's just young. He's he's going to be a stud. He's 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 been. I mean, he's he's been up and down as 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 guys often are. His home runs have gone way down. That he's giving up. His walk rate has gone way down. Strikeouts gone way up. Um, I think Bradish is a really interesting tournament play, and I personally I like I I'm sort of siding with both sides of the offense in this one. But uh, definitely with a little bit of an edge to Baltimore, especially guys like uh, Rushman. Um, Mullins has gotten hot, but he's expensive. But uh, he's finally heating up a little bit. And uh, he had Henderson, Mullins, and Rushman, I think, are all really good plays. And I'm fine with Boston if you want to go that route. I don't see it as being an especially good matchup. So I am uh, probably going to be off of most of that, with the exception of maybe a one-off of Devers. I like the Casas at 2100. Oh yeah, that's a cheat. cheat. Uh, is he going to play? I don't know. Let's see. Well, <laughs> I mean, just take a quick look. And I mean, if he plays, I'm going to play. Because like, it fits into the lineup. Yeah, I think he should. Um, yeah, I don't see why he wouldn't actually. But yeah, it's um, yeah, I, I'm I'm okay with it again. I'm not not as high on on the Boston side as you are, I think, but mostly agreement. Um, all right, Miami and the Mets. Um, Boy, I'm a little bit trying to figure out why both of these pitchers I shouldn't have interest in. Uh, it's Miami, so anybody against them is always going to be a little bit interesting. Pablo Lopez also is a good pitcher on the other side and has finally looked back a little bit more in form. You get a lot of wide range of outcomes with Carrasco, but I, I don't see why Carrasco couldn't couldn't win the slate uh, here, and I think he's going to be lower owned than he should be. So I like Carrasco, and I like uh, – 
actually, you know what? Maybe he won't be lower on than he should be. I think he actually is going to end up being pretty popular. Sorry about that. Um, but I, I, I think both pitchers are in play, and I, and I give the edge to Carrasco between them. I'm not really interested in the bats. I think Carrasco is a very legitimate, uh, the very obvious pivot off of, off of Robbie Ray, who's mm-hmm. going to be probably the chalkiest. Um, I think that he'll compete. Well, I, I, I have him competing at like 20% ownership, mm-hmm. uh, uh, which seems, well, it seems reasonable. Only gets mm-hmm. Miami. Certainly makes sense to me. Yep. Um, good park. Good, you know, pitcher can, has a ceiling. Miami can give up a ceiling. And I think he's completely in play. And, you know, depends whether you want to play him with, with Ray or, or him with something else. And I think there's plenty of something else to take, take stabs at. Um, but I think Carrasco is absolutely in play. I'm not getting to either. I think Pablo Lopez is a good pitcher, not you know, enough to keep me off of the Mets. Um, so for me, it's Carrasco and not a hell of a lot else. Same thing here, pretty much. Um, all right. Uh, you have the weird, you know, Wheeler Syndergaard situation against the Cubs here. And then Stroman against Philly and it's Wrigley. So we always want to check the wind and there is, it's 55 miles, 55 degrees. And 14, I was like 55 mile an hour winds. Like, yeah, not, not 55 mile an hour winds, 14, 14 miles blowing in from left. So this will be a major cross off for hitting for me. And I don't think I want to play Stroman at 7,700, but I think there are certainly worse things you could do. And I'm probably not going to do it, but I'm just throwing it out there. I, I don't think you should be considering hitters uh, in this game very much. If you did, it would have to be lefties. And I don't I don't really love anything. So maybe you could say, you know, Schwarber is a one-off or whatever. But I am personally am not very high on on the hitting in this game. I have, or, a, I have a game as a total cross. Yeah, makes sense to me. Um, Lance Lynn and Ober in uh, Minnesota. You know, this is how I feel about this this slate without having the, the standout obvious stack that's not going to be crazy high own. I actually have a little bit of interest in the White Sox, which will, which will, will go away uh, by the end of the day, but uh, most likely. And, and I think that Lance Lynn is a really good play here. Uh, he had the down game against Cleveland last time after having to have faced them back to back. Really just had a bad first inning. Um, was pretty good after that. Uh, I like Lance Lynn. I think he's a, I think he and Carrasco are very similarly rated. I have those two very, very close today. So um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm good with Lynn and I'm, I'm open to the White Sox. Uh, not in love with it. I just, I'm open to it. Uh, that's, that's where I'm at on this one. And uh, Gavin Sheets specifically is a cheap option for power. Although it's sort of it's more theoretical power. It feels like these days um, than an actual power, but that's all I've got for this one. What about you? Yeah, so um, I, I want to support the Lance Lynn play uh, for this reason. So going into this, his last game, there was, um, I remember the slate, I remember we talked about this. There was a kind of a premier, like 10K pitch, I forget who it was. And 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 you you were sold me on, we were trying to sell me on the Lance Lynn um, as being a really good pivot. He'd been really, really good or whatever it is. And then the problem was, was that with, with, with the weather news came in and the winds were blowing basically straight out. Uh, in that game. Um, and that's why I kind of got off him. I actually got on a little bit of the, of the other side in that game. And so I'm willing to write that game completely off. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, so I think it's a very similar type of situation today, you know, that, 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 that you're looking for a pivot off of some, some higher priced uh, or similarly priced chalkier guys. And I think Lynn is a really, really good play that you just kind of just, you know, reminded me that I'm supposed to look at. Um also, I do have just for whatever it's worth. I do have I do have Bailey Ober as as a cheapo that's getting you know it's like an okay point per dollar play. And, mm-hmm. and again against the White Sox, I mean you know we 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 we've, we've probably done worse than pitching righties against than trying righties against the White Sox. They don't mm-hmm. really strike anybody out. Um, but um, that's I guess and he doesn't really pitch many pitches. Uh, so maybe I'm not going to get to that, but I definitely think Lance Lynn is a pretty good pivot off of uh, some of the other guys. But definitely good pitching weather, 53 degrees. Oh, is that right? And uh, and yeah, sort of some wind, but sort of more cross field right now at least. But uh, I I would I don't mind. I, I like the weather for pitching, so I'm okay with with considering Ober, even though I, I personally like other guys a little bit better. All right, Mikolas and Hauser. Um, tell you, I I I I think that. Uh, I think that if you wanted to consider a St. Louis stack today, I think that that might be another way you could get off some of things, some of the other things. I, I do like uh, St. Louis a little bit. They're not priorities for me, 
but I have them in my sort of somewhere around four or five for my stacks today. And, uh, you know, again, there's not a t- lot of teams with a big run total and I'm not going to pick on Mikolas and I probably am not going to play Mikolas. Although this is the kind of matchup where you could see him working quickly, efficiently through the innings because Milwaukee uh, will chase a lot and he doesn't walk a lot of guys in general. So uh, I guess I'm not going to play Mikolas on this slate, but I, but I, I do think the St. Louis bats are probably the, where my highest level of interest is considering they're going to be unowned. You've got them in Milwaukee, which is a good hitters park, especially for lefties. Uh, not, not a lot of lefties on that, that lineup, but still just thought I'd throw it out there. And uh, I think, I think I'm, I think, I think as a low on stack, St. Louis is, 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 is interesting. So I have them like fourth or fifth right now, depending I'm sort of got a tie for fourth, but I, but I, I like them. So that's where I'm at. I kind of like it. Um, I kind of like the St. Louis idea as, as a lower on stack. Um, uh it wouldn't be the first time I got I I did I did I did well betting against Hauser, um, and again like just for that reason I mean they they they're decent enough value they're lower owned than some of these other these other teams it's a big slate and it's a good park and they're good hitters and you know and let's yeah. uh, let's go you know I, I just kind of like it um, and I'm not going to get to either of the the the, the pitchers and I'm not going to get to Milwaukee. That makes uh, perfect sense to me. Um, all right, let's talk about Arizona and Houston. Uh, just because of the ownership, you're going to have a low owned Lance McCullers. Uh, just because of the uh, excuse me the the price, um, I'm okay with it. I, I it's not what I'd be trying to do, but I'm certainly not going to hate on it. And then I do have Houston as my second favorite full stack uh, behind Atlanta and we'll get a little bit of ownership maybe on Alvarez and Tucker, but I, I am completely, completely. Okay. The only problem is I am doing it. The thing I hate doing, which is I don't even know who's going to end up pitching for St. Louis for uh, excuse me for uh, Arizona. Zach Davies is, is written up and then I've got other projections that have no, no pitcher for them. If it is in fact, Zach Davies, I will, uh, I will be happy to play Arizona and I'm so happy to play uh, Houston, but if not, I, I, I sort of have to reassess and what kind of a bullpen game it's going to be. But as of right now, Houston looks to me like the second best stack, which means they're the first best stack for me because they're going to be lower on than Atlanta. Yeah. I have Houston rated third. Um, and I, I do have uh, Zach Davies, uh, you know, starting pitching, but you know, again, that's just according to the DK app. DK app is usually pretty good though. Um, when they put a P up there. Yeah. Um, so I like that. And uh, I just the McCullers, uh, I mean, it makes sense. I think that though, if I'm going to go to a high price guy, aside from Ray, I think I'm more inclined to play, um, what's his name? Lance Lynn, I think. Um, I, that's just the way I think I'll end up doing it. Um, although I can't exactly figure out why. Um, maybe you're right. Maybe McCullers is, is kind of in play along the same, along the same lines there. So mm-hmm. um, uh yeah, all right. I'll 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 consider that as well. Yeah, he's been he's been really solid and and Arizona's offense is a little better than maybe than people think, but but I think it's I think we should consider him. I mean, it's it's the same thing. Whenever we have Robbie Ray as the chalkiest pitcher, we always should consider the other options. Um it, it, somebody seems to outscore him every time, so <laughs> it's it's worth it to at least think about these guys. Um all right, Oakland and L and the Angels with oddly enough, one of the better hitting slates on the Heading hitting weathers on the slate. I think that Oakland and I think that the Angels end up really popular here. And I don't mind I, I don't mind it. I mean, I'm looking at 20% potentially for for Trout. And I think Otani will be similar. Though then you fill in with the uh, the obvious guy. So you you get Mike Ford as a cheapo. Um I guess Rengifo and Ty, uh Tice, Tyus, whatever, however you pronounce the catcher's name. I'm not all that as excited about the uh, the Angels, and I'm fine with it. It's it's not my priority, but at, at high ownership for Trout and Otani, the guys I really want to play, I'm not I'm not extremely into it. I, I do think Sandoval is is definitely in a strong play. I, I think the ownership, you know, with him, I always feel like is a little bit higher than it should be in some of these spots. But against Oakland, I, it'd be hard for me to ignore him at 6,900. So Sandoval is definitely on my list, even though I expect him to be one of the chalkiest pitchers. And I think the Angels are a good stack, but not one that I want to play at high ownership. So I want to see where the ownership ends up with them uh, projection-wise before I decide. 
I think the Ray Sandoval pairing is going to be the chalk pairing. Um, I think Sandoval is, you know, going to be pretty chalky across the board, but it's something, but what's interesting is that, is that uh, one of the reasons I guess that the angels are going to project to be the, one of the better stacks and really chalky is you just mentioned it's good hitting weather. So, I mean, how do those things jive? You know, do I really want to play? And so usually you don't mind playing a, you know, uh, the pitcher with the correlate with the hitting, but do I really want to play Sandoval with the angels? You know what I mean? Like if there's, mm -hmm. if there's hitting weather issues, I mean, I don't know if I want a chalky angels. I mean, excuse me, a chalky Sandoval. So um, that's one of the reasons why I was. Well, it's, it's not like that. That's I don't look at hitting re re rather really against my pitchers who are strikeout pitchers. Like I said it last time with McKenzie, it's like, oh, but he's a fly ball pitcher and the wind's blowing out the same game you're talking about with Lance Lynn. And all that happened was was Trent McKenzie went out there and destroyed the slate like no one else. Like, I, I don't think we should worry about like it being a little bit warmer in L.A. for in terms of whether or not we should play Patrick Sandoval, in my opinion. That's just my general thinking. So I do have him rated like top point per dollar play by by these well by, by a decent amount I guess uh, I do him pretty highly owned but I don't I don't I don't mind some pivots I mean I don't mind Barrios you know mm -hmm. I, I I don't I, I think there are other things you can do but he certainly rates to be a really nice strong play he's a good pitcher against Oakland you know that's usually a pretty decent combination mm -hmm. um um and as far as the hitting goes yeah I, I kind of I'm kind of with you with respect to the Angels I mean they're gonna look like a good play. They're going to look to be like some team you want to put in there. And then you're like, really? You know, it's like, and I've thought that about the Angels before, and I think it's come back to bite me once. There was one time the Angels were hugely popular. I'm like, I still get it. I'm not playing them. And they put up 10 runs or something like that. Right. So, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm, the, the problem with, with <coughs> the Angels is that I haven't really come across, a, come across a team that I really, really want to play yet. Right. I guess Houston would be in – well, to me, and we do screw on Boston a little bit. I guess Houston is – is is the closest thing um so far mm -hmm. um so listen if angels do show up to be the highest owned or at least close to it probably under atlanta i, I listen it's, it's baseball i have no i have no no issues fading that so yep. um uh i think we're pretty much on, on in agreement i i also just in disclosure i i am getting the little bit of value out of some oaklands um so mm -hmm. if you're playing a bunch of lineups and you want to fade you know, get direct leverage against Sandoval and play like a couple of three man from Oakland. I'm, I'm not going to kill you for that. Yeah, Langelier, Dermar, Dermis Garcia. I mean, there's there's definitely some guys I would consider here. I, I have no problem with the idea of a, at least a mini Oakland stack, if not a, a if not even a full stack. I think that I think that that's viable. She's I mean, that's a pretty sharp thing to may, maybe get a little a little bit of the Oakland exposure in your lineups, if you're, especially if you're playing multiple lineups. All right, good baseball, um, a good good matchup here. Uh, what do you with uh, fun fun game maybe? Um, what do you think of the Dodgers San Diego from bat from fantasy? Not much. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm personally, uh, pretty much off of it. A little bit of wind blowing in from left. Um, if you want to play the Dodgers, this, I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. Snell in general has dominated them, but he, uh, he got crushed. I believe or was, I believe it was earlier this year. It may have been, maybe I can't remember whether it was earlier this year or last year. No, it was early, It was just a few starts ago. He, he, uh, he couldn't get out of the fi the fifth um couldn't get it out in the fifth and the other time the last time he faced it before that he struck out like 12 in five innings so uh all ranges of outcomes are possible if the dodgers on a on a short slate the dodgers don't really have much to play for anymore um they they already tied their their record for most wins in the season this could be the game they break it um i'm not getting to anything really in this game from a, from a from a priority perspective although if i if i was playing you know, 20 some odd lineups, I would definitely have one or two stacks of the Dodgers. Then what about you? Yeah, no, I, I, it's just a good game that uh, I have no interest in from a fantasy perspective. Yeah. The Dodgers who completely, by the way, just never lose to San Diego. So <laughs> well, they beat him like 12 times in a row or something. It's like nuts. Um, this next one is a little tough for me to, to, to pick. And this is a game I, I wanted to to do something. I think you're going to get the, the bullpen game out of Texas. Yeah, that's what I got too. And you don't have the best hitters necessarily there for uh, available for Seattle, so I'm sort of up in the air. But because Seattle was initially something I wanted to do, um, but I don't know. I don't love stacking against bullpen games. Maybe 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 a three man here, but I I, I do like you know against even in a bullpen game, uh, Hanager, uh, depending on you know you have minimum cost Toro, you could make a big stack pretty 
easily, like without with really cheap bats. So it depends on how their lineup shakes out and depends on how long we expect these relievers to go. But I think Seattle is is the team that I was sort of flirting with in the same in the same realm as St. Louis. Um, but but probably not going to end up making them a priority for me. Maybe a secondary stack, if anything. I do like Mitch Hanniger a lot. And what do you think about the Robbie Ray? Robbie Ray, the main thing? Um, yeah, he's a good pitcher. It's a good matchup. Something tells me this is the time to fade him, but I, I don't know. I mean, he was good last time out, but he I think he was like the seventh highest scoring pitcher on the slate. And it was only like six games. I mean, it was really nuts like that. There just was some huge performances. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, 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 I think it's, I think it's a fine, it's fine. It's uh it depends on how chalky we're talking because even if it's below 30%, I don't think that's too chalky. Once it gets into like that 35% range in the big buy-ins and things like that, which I think is very possible tonight. Uh, I sort of want to go look at another direction, but just in a vacuum, I expect him to be a really good play. And I expect him to be one of the best plays in the pitchers on the slate. Uh, we always know there's a range of outcomes for him. So if you don't want to play him, I have no problem with, I don't want to stack fully against him, but any of the bats from uh, from the Rangers, particularly Semyon Seager and Garcia. Um, but I I, I, I like him. I, I think if I was playing, I'd probably be right near the field at around 30%, which is where it's at now. If it got to be above 30%, I would try to get below the field. That's That's what I've got. He's not, if I was making one lineup, I probably don't use Robbie Ray. The difficulty of the fade for me um, on this slate is that it's just such an absence, at least, I mean, it looks that way, of, of real ceiling um, that you run the risk, risk. You run the risk of fading him. He has kind of a blah game and still gets there, you know, mm-hmm. um, which is a little annoying. Um, yes, yeah. Crosco could have a big game. Um mm-hmm. I guess McCullers could sort of have a big game, you know. Um, I don't know. That that that's that's the difficulty of the fade. The other difficulty of the fade is that once again, I haven't quite been convinced of the team that I really want to pay up for hitting wise, you know. So so if you are gonna fade him, you know, you know who can outscore him? Like you said, you know, maybe Lance Lynn, like you were saying. I think I think that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Um, so um yeah, I mean it's a, it is a, it is kind of a tough end on this slate, but I'm still going to probably try to do it. And 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 as you were kind of implying, I think on all Robbie Ray um, chalk slates, you should get a little something with the other team, um, and you really shouldn't get too cute. Couldn't say, "Oh, I don't want to play Corey Seager lefty lefty." Just 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 play the play the guys, you know, play play mm-hmm. play him, play Garcia, um, and and uh, just just in case. So that that's that that's where I am. I'm, Look, Ray is the best play, but he's going to be chalky. And I wonder if I'm with you about if I played one lineup, would I not? Play? I think I think I'm with you. I don't think I would play him in one lineup either. Um, yeah, interesting to think about, though. Yeah, definitely. Um, this is an interesting situation this last game because Logan Webb would be my number one pitcher on the slate by a pretty good ways. Um, I don't think they're going to let him pitch. He was he had a no hitter going in the last game against Colorado in the sixth inning, gave up a hit, and they immediately took him out of the game with sixty six pitches. Um, that was in Colorado, and I remember talking about how I liked him that day. He is a guy who generally has an extreme leash, but he's already thrown a career high in innings this year. There's no reason for the, the Giants have nothing to play for. That it certainly seems like they are managing his pitch count, and that worries me a little bit, and it worries me a little bit even with Marquis on the other side a little bit, although he's so cheap, maybe, maybe it's okay. Um, but I think both pitchers are, are strongly in play in this last one. And I would definitely side with, with Webb. I just feel very uncomfortable about how they let him go that, you know, that no hitter thing really irked me. You know what I mean? They pull him after, cause I played some of him that night in Colorado and, you know, five point five point one innings with one out, he gives up a, a single and then they pull him. So that's that's my that's my argument for not playing Logan Webb. Seventy two hundred is a, kind of a joke of a price to me. Actually, I think he's a better. I think Logan Webb is a better version of Mikolas in general is how he should be looked at. And um, uh, it's he's way too cheap, but he's not too cheap if you think he's only going to throw sixty to seventy five pitches. I could just see it happening though. The Giants are just trolling me personally, and and he goes out and throws a hundred pitches and has like a perfect has a complete game shutout with like two hits and ten strikeouts and just destroys the slate at like 3% ownership. Yeah. I'm willing to, I'm willing to 
to to bet that doesn't happen. Um, I'm willing to to, I, I and I think he's going to show up uh, in a lot of in a lot of uh, in a lot of optimals um, because a lot of people don't consider that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I'm expecting him to get like 15 percent ownership at the end of the day. But it's built into the projections, and they do follow the projections. And they, these guys have basically the same projection depending on which site you look at. Right. Um, uh, yeah. Webb and Mar Marquis. Oh well, that well, that's the th I haven't gotten to him yet. But as far as let Webb, goes, oh, okay, okay, um, I got you. I just, I just, again, I just don't know if I want it. The good thing about it is that he has, he does have the cake matchup, so mm -hmm. you, you could, you could get lucky and get there with that you know, sixty-five pitches, you know, mm -hmm. especially on a slate like this. But I, I think, I, I honestly do think the real play on this, in this, in this game, and maybe on the slate is is Marquee. I, I really like that a lot, actually. Um, uh, again, you have Sandoval is going to be really chalky. And if you look at Marquis like last, like four games on the road, every one of them you'll take, you know, and, 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 and even like you go back his other games on the road. I mean, I think he's very, very legitimately a, a good play of 5,700 in this spot. Um, is he going to outscore like any of these nine K guys? No, but, but I think that, um, I think that he's very legitimately good play for dollar play. It, 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 it brings up the question of, you know, what what are you what are you saving the money for? But yeah, you know what? You can play Houston's, you can play Atlanta's or whatever. Yeah. You can play lineups with if you if you really if you really are asking for it, you can play lineups with Marquis and Barrios together and then, you know, then play like like I say, five Aaron Judge lineups together, right? Whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh I I, I think Marquis actually and I, I don't think I played him almost at all this year. I think that on a this late, I think I'm I think I'm kind of interested. So that's 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 where I'm at on, in this game and this slate. I mean, who would have thought that that on a hundred game slate, I would have Marquis as kind of a play I'm highlighting, maybe. But yeah, that's kind of where I am right now. I mean, she shows low ownership and 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 a, and a decent value score and, and a shitty slate pitching wise. I think it's a I think it's a good setup for him to kind of get in. Yeah, I I think there's an argument for the Marquis Burrios kind of a thing, and then you can then you then you can go ahead and play the 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 Braves if you want to. Right, <laughs> right. You don't have to worry about it ownership too much, and also you're doing such a weird thing that you're you're you leave it open to to play any any high end hitters that you want elsewhere. Um, you could play that. You could play the Angels with the Braves. That that would be that would be fine if you play Marquis and uh and Burrios together. Um, I, so I, I I would say my priority right now would be Houston. Um, assuming that Davies is, is in fact starting and that's just because they're a little bit lower owned than the other teams I like after them, I really like the idea of getting to some Baltimore and, and Boston. Uh, those would be the ones that I, that I focus the most on for pitching. I, I do think like, I mean, even with everything we said, yeah, if I'm, if I, if I, I would be with the field basically then Robbie Ray, which obviously means I like him and I would probably, unless he gets to, you know, 35 to plus percent and, uh, and then Sandoval and Carrasco, I like a lot, but I, I I will be playing those guys with a Barrios, with a Marquis, something like that, um, rather than playing them all together. Or I would double spend up and get weird and play McCullers with Robbie Ray, which I just think is like going to be an un, unusual build that most people won't do. I have a name that I haven't heard of all year. What what happened to uh, Ozzy Albies? He's been hurt. I know. What does he have? Bit, like a seat, like the whole season, right? Yeah, he was out for the season. That's too bad. It happens every year for the Braves, and they just get better for some reason every time. No, no, they, 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 this Mike Harris guy decides to Von Grissom. They don't need him. What do they oh, need? Von Grissom. That's right. That's right. Michael Harris, Von Grissom. Last year, Eddie Rosario from the comes back from the dead and then returned to the dead afterwards. Had the greatest postseason of any player in Major League history, and uh, and now it doesn't can't find a team. So the Braves are are always a little bit going to get on my nerves because that they I feel like they stole a title from my Dodgers, but. Uh, yeah, they're they're just really good, man. Um, I, and I, I think the build you have up there, right, is is a really good, is a, is a very logical build that's probably a little little cashier than you normally would go. But I think that it works. And and if you fill it out with a, you know, hey, look, if it, why don't you know, why not fill the rest out with Oakland? Um, well, I will tell you this: if you have neither Ray nor Sandoval in your lineup, I mean, like, I, I think you already have a license to do whatever you want. How about that? Okay, fair enough. And it's a big enough slate where that 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 should probably be the case. Um, who would you pick as, as like, you know, we mentioned first, you, you, would you have Houston, Boston, or or who else would you have as your number two stack? Got to be Houston, right? I think so. That's what I would have too. Well, I have, I have them as my number one, but that's only because I'm ignoring the Braves are going to be crazy high owned. The Braves are are crazy. Was it, they, <laughs> they do it again where they waited till the fifth to start scoring runs. They just scored a million of them. Like, I swear, I don't think they had a hit through like 
three and a third at least. It was like I was watching the game, looking at the things. I was like, oh, Corey Abbott looks like he's having a game. Yeah, I saw that. And then all of a sudden, they just are they just would go completely nuts. Well, does it matter that it's that he's oh my god, he's zero and seven? Like they let people pitch with zero and seven. Which one? Paul Paulus. I know, and and how many no decisions? I'll tell you what, Zach Davies. I don't know if he's still got it going, but he had ten complete. Ten, Zach Davies had ten straight no decisions this year, this season, uh-huh. and started ten straight times on his scheduled day. So that's very, very unusual. I, I guess I guess it doesn't bother you playing the Braves that the Spino's a righty. I guess it doesn't bother. Right? No, it's just, the only thing that bothers me with his Spino is that he doesn't as 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 bad as much as he gets hit and everything. Um, he doesn't tend to give up like. He doesn't walk at people, so it's not like the, the full stacks have consistently not been ideal against him because you look at his – I mean, his walk rate is incredibly low, um, and it doesn't allow you the, the real giant game sometimes. He did give up some power, but, I mean, he's given up – he's given up, what, one home run? He hasn't given up a home run his last four start. Oh, no, actually, you know what? Some of those were out of the bullpen, so I want to take that away. Um, but, yeah, he's definitely, like, hittable. He's going to give up some hard contact in general. But he's not a guy who who I love full stacking just because of the lack of walk rate. And, and I think that, look, well, well, it might always make sense to stack five guys. I'm going to just keep saying it at the end of the season like this, when when all the run totals are below five and everything, sometimes it's not so bad to get a 4-2-2, a 4-3-1, a 4-4, um, not, not committing everything to one team. And I think that's, that's, that's reasonable. Um, but I also have no problem if you want to go five men on any large slate. Yeah, this is this is by the way, for those of you who've been following this, the, the Boston stack is definitely, definitely good for the brand, so to speak. Um yeah. this it's the anti Bradish play. You know, that I that's like yes. I just have to I just have to do it off the 42 points. Yeah, just, do it. Why not? It's I, just I, 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 I like the idea. You're, you're, I mean the ownership, they've got they've got what the second highest run total on the slate and their ownership is like fifth highest. Yeah, why not? I mean, I can get if Casas gets in the lineup, I get him at twenty one hundred, you know what I mean? And then then you the know, problem is they're that. facing a team with a better offense, but we treat them as if they have a better offense because they play in Boston. Right. So I, I that's why I give the edge to Baltimore in these situations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because uh, I think they're truly actually a better offense than than, than Boston is. Um, Boston just happens to hit like crazy at home, but Baltimore gets to play at that home tonight. You know, we can do it. We can play them all. Play just pull, pull stack the whole game. Just, just go Boston. Go go for run it back twice. What did they end up scoring last night? Because they had the, the play, million play, hour play delay. A Fenway stack. There it is. We play this. Yeah. Mullins, who gets like a thousand fantasy points a game, what did he, he what did he have thirty five yesterday? What did he have? No, twenty eight. Twenty eight yesterday. Yeah, fourteen to eight game yesterday. So that also is the that's the only part of it. Sheets is bad for the brand. Yeah, exactly. Because then <laughs> coming off the ceiling is what are you going to do? Bad for the brand. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I, I should be back for live. Uh, I'll be dialed in and 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 set in my place. I'm not not going anywhere for the first time in a million. I had. I had dad's birthday i had a million different things i've had going on so i've been back and forth but uh should be around and she said no it's not going to be around uh, as much over the next five days i'll be live tonight with you guys so yeah all right well good luck to everybody and uh hopefully it's a screenshot night i'll talk Let's to you guys. all right